Aha, there we go. Uh, okay, IVP, we'll find one. <clears throat> either in the example problems, you might have already done them all, in which case I will find one online. Additional problem. These are all too easy. This one is definitely bad. We're not gonna do that one. <laughs> I don't want to do this. That's not good. <laughs> Maybe I should stop being all like, this is too easy. Oh, wait, no, this actually isn't terrible. Uh, I thought it was four lines, but it's actually only two lines that then get simplified into pain. Uh, what if we did? This, I like it when they have functions in them, but you know what? It's okay. She's probably not going to give you something with like three. So we'll just. Do oh this one's a good one. Oh, this is this is great. This is great. I will do this one because it is trickily um drawn, but it is good. Um so we will begin. The is he is. I love my, my words today. Y double prime plus two y prime plus two y. equals h of t. This is Laplace transform to solve problems with forcing discontinuous forcing functions. Y not equals not y prime not equals not not one. And h of t equals the lovely and this is written interesting. It's one for pi is less than t is less than two pi, but it's zero for zero is less than t is less than pi, and two pi is less than t, which is very dumb the way that it's written because it's hard to read. So how would you suggest simplifying this forcing function into something which can be read from zero onward in time, because that's the best way to read a piecewise function, starting from zero and moving forward. How should we rewrite this? Look at the bounds. So from pi to two pi, it's gonna be one. Yeah, but everywhere else it's zero. Yeah, but we're always supposed to start from time equals zero in our forcing, in our piecewise. This is bad. Why, why can't we just ignore the zero term altogether? Once we turn on the one and then turn off the one, it should everything be zero already. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess you're right. But it's more readable if you write it like this. But he is right. The only time that anything matters is pi to 2 pi. At pi, we're going to turn on 1. And at 2 pi, we're going to turn 1 off. By the way, I should put the less than or equals here. Wait, how does it work? Oh. So remember that the main thing we need to do to start solving this is to turn this into a bunch of unit step functions, this forcing function. And that means at each time where something happens, we turn on or turn off functions that have been on or off. At time equals zero, we have nothing, right? What's the first time something happens? What's the first time? T equals pi is when something happens. So one turns on at pi. So we need to turn on one by writing one u pi of t. We'll remove the one in a little bit. Mm hmm Now at two pi, what happens? Two pi turns zero, it shuts off. Yeah, it shuts off. So how do we write one shutting off at two pi? Minus one pi. U two pi. 
Yeah. So at u pi t represents turning something on, but minus u2 pi represents turning something off. So one turns on at u pi and then turns back off at u2 pi. And then after that, it's zero forever. So h of t can be written u pi t minus u2 pi t. Yay, who, yes, wow. Lovely, um, we're getting... What? How come it's minus? What do you mean? Before u2 pi? Um, because when u2 pi becomes one, at time equals two pi, one times negative one is gonna be negative one, right? And negative one will turn off one. Oh. So the minus represents, if you have a minus unit set function, that unit set function is gonna turn something off or introduce a negative or whatever, you know, um, at that time. So at pi, we turn one on, and at two pi, we turn one off by writing minus one. And that turns off one. And then we can just simplify it to look like this, because this is easier to Laplace transform. Um, so now I can rewrite everything as y double prime plus 2y prime plus 2y equals u pi t minus u 2 pi t y 0 equals 0, y prime 0 equals 1. And we can now, the goal is to solve this, and we're supposed to do it with what? Laplace transform. All right. So we have s squared y of s minus 1. I'm skipping, well, no, I'll write the pattern just to not skip steps, minus s y zero minus y prime zero plus two s y of s minus y zero plus two y of s. And then according to the table, u pi of t simply turns into e to the negative pi s over s. And u2 pi becomes e to the negative 2 pi s over s. I believe that's right. Let me think. Yes, yes it is. So you just have plus the u the y of t. Yeah, I just have plus u pi of t. Because it happens to transform directly into 1 over s. But you have to have the e to the negative pi s as well. If the table doesn't say this, I think the table does. Does the table say this directly? Okay, lovely. That's nice of it. Now we can simplify. S squared plus 2s plus 2 y of s minus 1 equals e to the negative pi s minus e to the negative 2 pi s. I'm actually going to factor all of that out and just write times 1 over s. Because I can um, in this case. If there were an s in the numerator somewhere, it would be uh, pretty much impossible to do what I just did. But because it's all constants, if the e blah, blah, blah is only multiplied by constants everywhere, then you can just factor it all out. Um, together. So I can take both these terms and just factor this out temporarily. That's only because I want to do the Laplace transform with a single fraction. Uh, where, where do you get minus one? What? Minus one. Right here. Because oh. y prime is one. Oh. Yep. And then I'll just cross this out and this out so it's clear that there's one way. So we can add the one to both sides and divide by blah, 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 blah to get y of s equals e to the negative pi s minus e to the negative two pi s times one over s, all this. But there's also the plus one, right, over, because I added the one over here and divided by s squared plus two s plus two. Now, um, yes, 
we need to think for a little bit. Okay. So we need to perform partial fractions on this term. Do we need to perform partial fractions on this term? It can't be factored. So it's just a single quadratic in the denominator. So it's already done. We just need to um, factor this using factor, using complete the square. So now is a good time to complete the square on s squared plus 2s plus 2. So practice that just to make sure you can do it. Complete the square of s squared plus 2s plus 2. Man, I have become inexplicably tired. And by inexplicably, I mean totally explicably. Because of course I'm tired. Um, S squared plus 2S plus 2 can be written as, sorry, I'm just plugging in my phone. So it charges. S plus one squared plus one. Is that what y'all got? Great. Still know your math. This can be easily inverse Laplace transform using the table. So we are done with that. But we are not done with this. So we'll go do some partial fractions to it. Yay. What are the two terms? One is A over S. Do you know the other one? Hmm? Yeah. Is that what you were thinking about? Okay, great. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I just got to do it. I mean, you can also just write BS plus C if you really want to. You technically still can. You just have to do some more algebra later. Yeah. So this makes the algebra done early. Anyway, now we'll write 1 equals A S plus 1 squared plus 1 plus B S plus 1 plus C. So it's S plus 1 is the denominator squared, right? Yeah, it's the quadratic term, s plus one is. So we can put s plus one up there. But really, technically, if we wanted to, we could just write s. And later on, we'd have to do some annoying algebra. But in this case, we don't have to do it because we already completed the square for ourselves. Um, it makes some pluggings quite slightly easier. For example, if we write s equals zero, we get one equals, this all goes away, so we get two A. So A equals one half. So that's my first, met. that's the first thing I do. Do any of you have any ideas on how to quickly get any of the other letters? That's a good one. S equals negative one. Yes, would actually. What do you think, Aaron? Do you want to do s equals negative one? Do you have a different suggestion? I think s equals negative one. Yeah, so s equals negative one will simplify some things. So we can try that one. One equals, so this becomes zero, so we just have a, and this becomes zero, so we just have minus c. If a equals one half, then c must equal negative one half. Yes. Now, what about getting B? Any suggestions on that one? Mm -hmm. 
at this point, there's no more clever pluggings in that we can do. So what else can we try? So James suggests A plus B equals zero. Does that make any sense to you, Aaron? What, what do you think about that? So what we can do is check all, because B is multiplied by an S squared term at some point, we can check all the S squared terms. So on the left side, what is the S squared term? Zero S squared. On the right side, there are a couple things that multiply out to S squared. When this multiplies out, you get s squared, right? Something. So a times s squared. So you have an as squared term. Yeah. What s squared terms do we have over here? Just b. When in doubt, if you really are like, I don't know where the s squared and s terms are, multiply absolutely everything out. But that is annoying. So sometimes you want to pick one that's really easy to figure out the letters for. Um, so in this case, this gives us 0 equals a plus b, which gives us the lovely b equals negative 1 half. And now we can write this as 1 half times 1 over s minus 1 half s plus 1 plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1. You may be thinking, Jonan, where did all that come from? Because b and c are both negative 1 half, I can factor them both out into this negative 1 half here. And then I just have s plus 1 plus 1. Agree? Yes? OK, so now that means I can plug this in into our function over here. So I'm going to take all this. I'm going to rewrite it with consternation. e to the negative pi s minus e to the negative 2 pi s. And then we're plugging in for this thing which we've just now discovered is this thing, 1 half times 1 over s minus 1 half s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1. Yes? Yay. And then finally, we have from over here plus 1. Okay. Now we need to inverse Laplace transform everything. So when you have a bunch of E's, do you recall what we need to do? Yeah, we need to take the inverse Laplace transform of this bit. And then we need to find out what that is and then plug it into the Laplace transform that involves e to the negative pi s and the one that involves even negative two by s. So we'll start with this guy. There's so many terms. There's so many terms. Um, one half times one over s is of course one half. Then s plus one over s plus one squared plus one is e to the negative t, cosine t. 1 half minus 1 half e to the negative t cosine t, according to the table, minus 1 half e to the t sine t. So let's call this, we'll call this f of t, all right? Um, and we'll call this f of s. So the f of s is the prime state. Yeah, we're just calling that f of s. And the reason for that is because now we can use the table more easily. Because the table tells us that e to the negative c s f of s, right, transforms into u c t f, but not t, t minus c. I think it should also be e to the negative t to the sine. Ah, yes, e to the negative t sine t. Thank you for letting me know. So now it suffices for us to transform e to the negative pi s and e to the negative 2 pi s times all of this, and then put a negative sign in the middle between them. 
So to do e to the negative pi s times all of this, we are going to write e to the negative pi s f of s is going to be written as u pi t, yes, degree, times f of t minus pi. So that's going to be 1 half minus 1 half e to the neg negative t minus pi. Ehoo. Cosine t minus pi minus one half e to the negative t minus pi sine t minus pi. Are you enjoying yourselves? You said nice numbers. Okay, now I would like you to do this on your own. In the first Laplace transform, e to the negative 2 pi s by all this to get some practice because it's basically the same thing we just did. Do you have questions? Okay, so try inverse Laplace transforming. You know, we already have this, yeah, you know, so just Laplace transform when it involves e to the negative 2 pi to get some practice in doing the same thing. Negative 2 pi t times the same effect. Yeah, because it's times the same fs. So we can you can really just write capital F of S if you wanted for ease of yeah. Or like yeah, so so we transformed e to the negative pi s f of s this way. Now we're transforming e to the negative two pi s f of s. So I'm going to put a little negative sign here because there's a negative. U2 pi t. Good so far. Pretty much copy all the FS. Yep, it's pretty much the same thing, but with 2 pi instead of pi. Yeah, because remember, we're plugging in the new C because we're doing e to the negative 2 pi s. Now, luckily for us, sine of t minus pi and cosine of t minus pi and cosine of t minus 2 pi and sine of t minus 2 pi have nice forms. Do you all remember what cosine of t minus pi is equal to? No. It's negative cosine of t. Do you know what sine of t minus pi is? Negative sine of t. It's the unit circle for me, because you know if you have sine of t at an angle and you do pi to it, it's the same oh. angle, but on the negative side. See? So that's why we can rewrite it. Well, first, let's finish inverse Laplace transforming this friend, but that's just e to the negative t sine t. So finally, we write e to the negative t sine t, and we are done. What? e negative t sine t? Because that's that. Oh, right. Let me put an arrow. And this is y of t. <laughs> e to the t. <laughs> With pain. Um, and of course, we can rewrite these, you know, as, as, as this is, you know, negative cosine t and this is negative sine t and what is cosine t minus 2 pi do any of you know limiting unit circle Wait, negative two pi? what's cosine t minus 2 pi according to the unit circle it's just yes yeah, so cosine t because you know the angle, you do two pi, you get right back. So this is cosine t. Unfortunately, because um, 
you can't really you can't really combine these terms because well, there's a whole UPI YouTube. There's really no point. It just makes it look nicer a little bit, kind of, sort of. Oh, when signs off the crossing key. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> anyway, okay, we're done with this one. That's one example. Um, maybe I should do a simpler example now, so that we have more of a picture of the kind of thing that will be on the exam. How about this one? Or this one's simpler. No signs involved. Well, actually, no. We definitely should do one that involves signs and cosines for practice. It's important. It's a simple looking solution. So, um, so we'll do one more and then we'll be done with all of our studying for the exam, I think. And I'll try and use the rest of my day to write practice problems for the latter parts of the exam. F of t, where y0 zero equals 0, y prime 0 equals 1, and f of t equals 1 from 0 is less than t is less than 3 pi, 0 t is greater than 3 pi. So the question is, how do we write this as a bunch of unit step functions? First is zero first. Well, we actually write whatever's first first. So we actually write one. So because one is at time equals zero. So that's why I reorganized h of t last time to tell us what happens at time equals zero. It was zero, we start with zero. So in this case though, it starts at one. Then what? It turns off at three pi. Less than three, less than three. It remains one until three pi. So at three pi, what happens? What does the function become? Zero. Zero. So how do we make it zero at three pi? Yeah, so at 3 pi, how do we make this equal to 0? We have to turn off 1. How do we turn off 1 at time equals 3 pi? But what do I put here? because we're turning minus, it off, minus. minus. There we go, does that make sense? So we start with one, that's what it initially is, and then at three pi, we turn off one. So that at three pi, you have one minus one, which is zero, right? And then you have zero for the rest of time. I like saying the rest of time, it's fun. Um, All right, um, now it's time to perform the, we'll rewrite this as y double prime plus y equals one minus u three pi t. Oh, you do? Did we do this already? Um, or did you practice? Not as full, we'll three of them ah, fun. Well, we'll start going. S squared y of s minus s y of zero minus y prime of zero. You can make the fractions for. Oh, yes, you can. You are an accurate. That's all. Oh, there's so much repurposing we can do because this goes to zero. So we have s squared y of s. Sorry, s squared plus one y of s. Agree. 
And this is minus one equals one minus u three pi of two. If we add the one over, we get s squared plus one y of s equals two minus u three pi t. Now, we need to make sure to isolate the u three pi term from other terms. So we do that before we will cross transform the right hand side. What do you mean? We, we oh, I haven't Laplace. <gasps> I haven't Laplace transformed the right side. I'm so dumb. Uh, let me Laplace transform the right side. This is e to the negative three pi s over s. One over s. Sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> eh, everything's fine. We just we got rags. Oh yeah, you use that and I'll use this. Beep boop. I'm really concerned about the, the remote, that's all. And I guess my AirPods a little bit. Uh, and probably my charger. Such things occur. Yeah. If we're not okay. In the response. Yes, that is a true statement. That is indeed what has happened at this time. Confused. Hi, people on the video. We are fixing the water on the table. And by fixing, I mean, I don't know. Yes. OK, we're good. OK, anyway, we were fixing my dumb mistake. Oh, we can't really repurpose it very much, unfortunately. Well, it'll be. Um, we can. We can pull out the either and three pi s. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're what, what we're actually going to pull out? Oh, sorry. Huh? So sorry. We can do no we can do partial fractions for the for one over s times s squared plus one. Then we can reuse that. Whoa. <laughs> I hate when that happens. So we can, yeah. Then we can reuse that to the term that we made. Mm -hmm. So what we, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So we, yes, yes, we can. Um, because we can write this as one over s minus e to the negative three pi s, one over s. And so you can observe from looking at this that one over s and one over s are both going to have once we divide out s squared plus one. The same partial fraction, yes. Um, however, there is an even simpler thing we can do that, well, I mean, yeah, basically we're just going to factor out because of the fact that 1 over s and 1 over s will have the same partial fractions, we can write this as 1 minus e to the negative 3 pi s, 1 over s. But you know what? In the last problem, that confused things excessively. So instead, we are not going to do that. <sighs> I don't know why I decided to do that. We're just going to add the one, because we, we I, I took this one and added it over here. So we have one over s minus e to the negative three pi s, one over s plus one. We'll divide s squared plus one everywhere to get y of s equals one over s, s squared plus one, minus e to the negative three pi s, one over s, s squared plus one, plus one over s squared plus one. This is immediately inverse Laplace transformable, yes? So now we simply need to do partial fractions for our friend 1 over s, s squared plus 1. Great. So one over s, s squared plus 1 is the sum of what two terms? We have a term for over s and a term for s squared plus one. Mm -hmm. And then a, I mean b plus b s plus b. Great. Okay, so one equals a s squared plus one. Then we have b s plus c times s. What would you suggest we plug in first? Mm 
equals zero. Mm -hmm. S equals zero gives us one equals A. Look at that, so easy. Um, trying to think if there's another nice thing that we can plug in. I don't think so. Oh, you know what? Yes, you are right about that. Ah, you know what? Ooh, can you all guess what C is just from looking at it? Zero. Yes, why? Yeah. It's the only term that has an S. So CS is the only S term on the right, right? Because everything else gives us blah, 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 blah. But on the left side, you know, none of, none of it's S on the, on the right side except for CS. And on the left side, it's zero. So 0s zero equals CS, which gives us C equals zero. How fun. And then um, James said A equals negative B. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, because S squared, S squared. So we have 0s um, squared equals A S squared plus B S squared, which gives us B equals negative one, which means this can be written as one over s minus s over s squared plus one. Yay. So now we can plug all that into our complicated friend here. Both times is the fun bit, it's a nice bit. So we'll go over um, y of s equals, first we have to convert this into, one over s minus s over s squared plus one. Then we have my, is it still recording? Yay, recording still in progress. Now the question is, no. But I remember where we were at. Y of s was equal to one over s, s squared plus one minus e to the negative three pi s, 1 over s, s squared plus 1, plus 1 over s squared plus 1. We had successfully converted this into 1 over s minus s over s squared plus 1, minus e to the negative 3 pi s, 1 over s minus s over s squared plus 1, yes? And then this here is just 1 over s squared plus 1. And now we can convert. This becomes one minus cosine t. This here, we'll call it capital G of s is one minus cosine t, right? So that's gt. And this is sine t, yeah? Wait, you love plus transform it? Well, I'm, I'm doing the inverse of plus transform on each of these terms. Oh, yeah, but we're looking at this one right now because there's an e to the negative three pi s so we have to refer to our table, which I will put up here. U three pi, uh, U C T, sorry, E to the negative C S F S e, uh, goes to U C T F T minus C. We know that we have E to the negative blah, blah, blah. We have capital F of G of S, we now have G of T, so we can plug in T minus C, right? So this whole thing becomes, and I'll, I'll erase the negative, so we'll, we'll put the negative in later. This whole thing becomes U three pi T one minus cosine T minus three pi. So I noted that this expression can be written as e to the negative cs, where c is three pi, times capital G of s, where G of s is some function of s. Oh, okay. And then I use the inverse Laplace transform, which says that the inverse Laplace transform is u c of t, where c is three pi, times f of t minus c where F is the inverse Laplace transform of this. The inverse Laplace transform of this is one minus cosine T. So we need to plug in T minus C into this function in order to put it into this form. 
And that's one minus cosine t minus three pi. So you're still Laplace transform, right? Sort of, yeah. This is a temporary inverse Laplace transform that tells me what I need to plug, um, you know, what I need to plug into this form. Because the e to the negative 3 pi s makes everything slightly wonky. Okay. So whenever you see the e to the negative 3 pi s or e to the negative whatever s, you need to look at this form and, and figure out what is capital F, what is lowercase f, and what does lowercase f look like when I plug t minus c in? Oh. oh, does that make sense? OK, yeah. So that's what we So we see an e to the negative cs, so we need to find capital F of s. Then we need to find lowercase f of s. Then we need to plug t minus c into lowercase. And then we fill out the form. Because of the e negative Yeah. And so because we've now successfully inverse the on each of these terms, we now have y of t is equal to 1 minus cosine t minus u3 pi t 1. I'm going to say that this is negative cosine t. So 1 plus, oh God, plus cosine t plus sine t. And we did it. One of the fun interpretations of this general, of this differential equation is that, that 3 pi, um, this one turns off this one. So at t equals 3 pi, your equation actually looks like this is just, it's just for fun. At t is greater than 3 pi, your equation looks like negative cosine t minus cosine t. So negative 2 cosine t plus sine t. And so this is what our equation looks like after t is greater than 3 pi, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, but this is the general, this is, this is, the, this is, this is the equation. This is the answer. And hopefully it is this simple on the exam. Because in this thing, we only need to do one partial fraction. And we just had to use the, the result of it twice. Um, we want to cosine t. Sorry. Huh? That's what it looks like. So I was talking about the unit set function. When t is greater than 3 pi, this becomes 1. So you get 1 minus 1. And you get negative cosine t minus cosine t. But that's just, that's just little funsies. Uh, I got that from the, from, the, from the web series, and I've never stopped saying it. I really just stopped saying it. But anyway, um, we are done. Uh, it is 1.46. I should probably use the next 14 minutes to come up with questions for you to practice, unless you would like, unless you have any other questions, anything at all you'd like me to review. So in some cases, I have to use partial fractions? Whenever it is multiple factors in the denominator. The, For the sake of Laplace transform. Yes. In order to Laplace, inverse Laplace transform this, you need to partial fraction it into two, two or more pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think, that's it. I think that is it. I will come up with some problems that involve the delta function, the convolution integral, and um, first order linear, whatever, you know, the stuff. And I will get back to y'all in an announcement soon, and we will be good. Huh. I'm going to stop the recording and hope, beyond hope, that my recording didn't get crashed.